Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to part two of my five things about series on my Swift Sport. Today we have five great things about my ZC32S following on from five annoying things about the ZC32S. That video seemed to go down really, really well. So I'm going to make this follow up, obviously. That's what people want to see. So let's not mess about and we'll crack straight in at number one. This is in no particular order and it's also generalised to my opinion only. This isn't for everybody. This is just how I think. I, I made that disclaimer at the start of the last video. But I'm actually going to start off with these. Not the literal seat covers, but the actual ZC32S seats themselves. I know they have the standard Swift issue where they rip here. Now you're probably thinking, why weren't these included in the annoying part of the video? Let me explain. The bolster does rip and mine is literally about to go there and they do hold water stains and stuff like that. However, extremely comfortable. And I think that that sort of just takes the bad stuff away from them straight away. This is exactly the type of seat that you need if you're gonna be on a long journey or something of the sort. Like I just came back from Newcastle yesterday, hence the car's still probably a bit messy. I do apologize. I've cleaned it once or twice since the last video, but you know what it's like. You can never keep them fully clean. Um, but yeah, these seats are absolutely fantastic for long distance driving. You get no cramps, aches, pains, nothing. Only maybe after about four or five hours do you start to feel like that. And in my opinion, that's pretty good for a car seat when my other Swift is the daily. I don't know why I put it over there. You, you get that in the MX-5 seat after about half an hour. So yeah, props to Suzuki for making a comfortable seat. Maybe not the most, most robust, but we'll leave that open for discussion. And I'd say for an interior overall, it's quite a comforting, pleasing place to be. Steering wheel's nice and soft and comfortable to grab. You've got these like little sort of leather textured grabs here at the side. Everything's where it needs to be. Everything's nice to touch. It's not cheap plastic that feels like it could crack if you do that on it. And everything's just... It's, it's modest, but it works very well. And that's why I like it. I think it's genuinely for, like I said, with the seats along with the rest of the interior it's a very nice place to be if you are doing cross-country driving i'm speaking from a uk point of view here obviously like if, it, if you're in australia or something that might be a bit different but from generally this point of view the interior as a whole it's a pretty decent place to be in my opinion i'm still filming on my new tripod so let me know how this turns out i think it looks okay so far standing here filming it but the second thing i'm going to talk about is the looks of the car stock and modified as well I think they are a very striking looking car, the 32, and obviously I'm going to have a biased opinion and say that it is the best looking one. It is definitely the best looking one in my opinion by far. I wouldn't have bought one otherwise, but yeah, the things you can do to these is insane, like looks wise. If you can find the parts, obviously that's an if. Even standard, they're very nice looking cars to look at, like you've got, it's just, I, I don't know, just, just look at it, look at it for yourselves. She's not a bad looking car, but yeah. If it, what do you think? Is this the best generation Swift? Or we're talking from like very beginnings, humble beginnings to the current day new Swift Sport. What is the best one? I'm still sticking with this. And I think you all know what this option is. gentlemen need i say any more on this segment seriously though before i move on from the sound like come on you can't say that this doesn't sound great this is one of my favorite things purely because you know they made these cars up until 2017 this is like one of the final hurrahs for like the twin cam 16 valve engines that sound great like proper engaging fun to drive where you can really feel a driver's connection sort of style engine i think there's better ways to put it than that, but I'm not actually sure how else I can put it. But this is the last breed of that. Now, they're all going smaller and turbocharged. They don't have the same driver connection. They just don't have the same feel or just sort of... They don't have that same charm about them. And that's why, again, that's one of the reasons why I chose this car. Because it's, it's just fantastic. It makes this car ten times better than it already is having this engine in it. And I mean that. 
My fourth favourite thing involves us to step out once again, but we'll be coming back in here in a second. And believe it or not, this is probably, this isn't something that I'd usually point out as one of my sort of favourites, if you like, but, no, my car's not gonna shout at me, but it's the Xenon from Factory headlights. I don't think the 31s came with these, did they? So this is the first generation Swift where they did have the Xenons in from the factory. And they look fantastic. Like the other Swift headlights are like jam jars full of glow worms in comparison to these. And they're not like conventional. Um, I've heard some stories about some Xenon lights where you can't even replace any of the Xenon projectors. However, you can split these, you can replace the projectors in them on their own if they go. So they're not, mega 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 expensive to replace and yeah you can see how bright they are even in the daylight and they look great too for photos and they're automatic it's just it's just a nice feature that brings the car into the modern day in the correct way and as well obviously because it has xenons it has to have these little guys in there as well which i'm not going to not demonstrate this because i wanted to see what this looks like on the outside for the longest amount of time and my door's probably not even going to stay open there is it hopefully you got a clear enough shot of that i definitely did because it landed in my eye and some of you might find this as a cringy sort of cop out last option but i don't think it is hear me out on this please don't shout at me never mind my last reason for this now is it's just a different, unique and quirky car all in one go sort of thing. It's like the three in one. You hardly see any of these. You see a few more three door 32s nowadays, but certainly not the five doors. So if you wanted one of these and you wanted a bit of exclusivity, go for the five door. That's what I definitely say. They hold their value better than the three doors too. I don't know how many people know that, but that seems to be a trend that what I've seen when exploring these for sale on the market. And it's... I've still not seen hardly any in the four plus years now of ownership that I've had of this thing. I think I've seen four other white five doors. That's it. In all those years, literally one averaged out per year. If that's you, I feel like it's, it's... I feel like a lot of people would sort of just look past this car and think, oh, it's nothing much special, but it is. You can watch you, all my other videos. You can watch, go back and see the amount of genuine fun that I and, and other people have with these cars as well. But it is unique it's so different it's just nice to see something like that every once in a while because all you seem to see these days is just golf r s3 rs3 it's just interesting and that's probably an unpopular opinion so slate me for that in the comments if you will but if you want my opinion honestly overall it's a fantastic little car this and if you're watching this as a sort of outsider to someone who wants to buy a swiss sport i really hope that this has sort of given you a little bit of an insight on what one might be like and my my few favorite things about it and then you can see the auto lights in action there actually but yeah um these are th i've not like sort of gone into always oh someone's just crashed the trailer um technical difficulties so as I was about to say before that Volvo decided to reverse his trailer into uh, the tree down there, I was going to say that I've not gone into depth at all about any modifications, specific mo modifications in this video, because I felt like if I put, oh, what's your favourite thing, exhaust, wing, I'm not going to put that in this video, it's a bit irrelevant. So if you were wanting to watch something where I talk through five like popular mods on these, I will also make that video, and that's possibly coming next after this. I know a few people definitely would like a point of view on that. So if you'd like to see that, let me know. But that's it for this video. And hopefully you found it as interesting as the last one. Thanks for the support on the last one because you just, you, you absolutely all smashed it. I'm pretty much nearly a thousand subs now. So you've got yourselves to thank for that. And just again, thanks for the continued support. I can't believe little old me stood here in the middle of nowhere making videos for the past two and a half years has led to nearly a thousand people wanting to see that content so yeah big up yourselves i'll see you again soon take care